can. But as we begin and we just open up with prayer as we always do, um, we say told our Rabbah to Abiyah once again and always for blessing us to gather, um, for giving us the opportunity to learn and to relearn and to um, be inspired, be encouraged, you know, by his word, by his uh, commands and, and just by the things that he has put before us. Um, we thank Abiyah that everybody made it safely back home um, from their Sukkot, wherever they were. Um, we thank Abiyah for uh, his Ruach HaKodesh um, being up on all of the gatherings we were at, no matter how big or small, just family or in bigger settings, um, um, that we would be re-energized. And, 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 and that being in that setting that like for myself is just encouragement to go forward and to um, to do more and to be more as far as being um, vessels for his use and his tabernacle. Um, we thank Abiyah for all of the families that were able to keep us a coat um, um, in larger groups or like once again, even with just immediate family. Um, and we just pray Abiyah that we were all edified that everybody who was able to participate in the experience, no matter where their level of um, biblical knowledge is at, um, but that it would it, it would it would push us to want to uh, be better servants of yours, Father Yah, and because I know there were people who weren't completely locked into this, and they might have been their first first or coast wherever they were at. And um, we just pray, Abba Yah, that this would help um, just nudge them even closer to you and pull them even closer to you, um, inspire them to learn more about you, um, uh, and the first and foremost to to read. If they're able to pick up a Bible and to learn um, the commands and the history and the culture and the ways of our people and um, and that their eyes would be open to see past the deception. Um, we pray, we thank you for Annie Yada. As she said, she went in with anger and she came out feeling a new sense of joy out beyond. We just pray that you continue to bless her and her family um, and with whatever they need as only you know. Um, we pray that you uh, have mercy on our family and, and forgive her of any transgressions, if there be any, I'll um, that you mend the relationship and, and make it a, 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 a manageable experience at, as, as you know, in her dwelling as it is right now, I'll be out. Um, and that you just be the mediator. You, you uh, send your holy angels to protect the hedge that you got around her and her family and, um, that you make all of our crooked paths straight in whatever way is needed, as only you know. Um, we pray for Ock Patrick's mother who just had surgery, Abiyah, that you um, strengthen her body, you strengthen her mind, and that you strengthen her spirit, Abiyah, that as you heal her, um, you open her up, open her heart up to discern, um, to hear your word and to hear you as you speak, um, uh, and to be able to see the things going on around her and to see, um, your almighty hand and your almighty presence upon everything that's going on with her and her family. Um, I pray that you continue to put the words in his mouth to be um, a proper representation of what it is that you're trying to show us all um, for his, for his own. Um, as he tries his best to um, represent your word the right way. Uh, I pray that you have mercy on this household and that you bless his children, that you bless his rib, um, and that you allow them into your kingdom, Abba Yah, to be your holy will, as I pray that for all of us um, on the call. Thank you to Ak DJ and his family. I thank you for blessing their Sukkot, that he was able to get up with his family and chop it up and to um, be blessed and to be edified, as I know they were. <laughs> um at the fireside chats, as he said, he was at the same as we were at Abiyah. We, we, we just, you know, we just, uh, we're honored, Abiyah, that you allow us this opportunity that you've taught us what it is that we need to do. Um, and I just pray that your shalom is up on all of our households. And although we, uh, we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, or we understand that you are a consuming fire, and we know that fire will either consume us literally or produce gold. Um, 
And we know that trial and tribulation is a part of this, but we find shalom in being counted worthy to go through that trial and tribulation for your name's sake. And we just pray that your shalom is up on our households, Father Yah. Um, and, and, and an almighty heavenly shalom and not the shalom of this world. If it be your holy will, Abba Yah, we give you all honor, glory, and praise in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. 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 Shalom, everyone. You came, y'all. We were just talking about Sukkot. Ak, what's up with you? Shalom, Mark. It's been a been a long day, man. Been a long day. Working man day. Hallelujah. I tell you, man. Been a long day. <laughs> I'm, tired. I'm tired. I'm tired, man. I don't know how long I'm gonna hang on here with you, but I'm tired, man. Oh, good. You know, but, uh, <laughs> Any takeaways oh, from the Anything you want to, anything stood out to you? Um, about today? Yeah. About Sukkot. About Sukkot? Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, it was, um, I mean, this is um, my um, third Sukkot, really third, what, fourth, fourth one, but like the one that I've, the biggest one I've ever stayed, the one I stayed with with the most people. You know, and, um, you know, just uh, knowing that you're around people that understand everything that you think about throughout your whole day as an Israelite or as a person that's walking, that's in the way, the truth and the light. You know, um, and then uh, for us single people, you know, that uh, don't, they're not married, don't have a spouse that's in this, you know, when two are gathered together. You know, in my name, you know, the, the Ruach HaKodesh is there in the presence. So, you know, I, I definitely felt that, you know, I felt so relaxed and I felt, um, you know, so understood. And, um, you know, and uh, there was no pretense with anybody. And that was a good thing to see, you know, with everybody that, you know, that they were basically just, you know, their yes is a yes and their no is a no. I mean, they, they're the people that you think that they are when you, when you, you know, study with them week in and week out. And then when you meet them, you see them for who they are and everything fits, you know what I'm saying? So, and you can just tell the, that the, the people that are, you know, they want out, man, they want out of Babylon. They want out of uh, this mortal life to go into the immortal life, you know? So that's, that's our, that's our motivation. And that's kind of how I, I live, you know, I, I know, um, I know I listen to, um, uh, first Corinthians, second Corinthians and the acts today. And I think, uh, uh, some first Peter, or whatever, but, you know, just listening to, uh, uh, especially in second Corinthians where it's really, um, kind of related to some of the stuff in Sukkot was just like, you know, um, the mindset, you know, of, uh, uh, of the, um, the Kodashim, you know, it's um, yeah, it's about it's about love and stuff like that, you know, and it's a it's a it's it gets bigger. The love gets stronger. The love gets overwhelming, and I don't mean overwhelming like it's bad. It's just you know you you're going to keep on train changing. You know that's that's what this life is about. You know it's about change uh, every day. It's about um, you know, wanting to be better. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you're not going to worry about somebody reproving you. And um, that's the way I felt like everybody was there. They just had questions and and the questions got answered and they wanted to go over certain things that they had been, you know, thinking about in the Bible and, you know, um, sitting around a fire, fire burning late night. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, you know, I, I, you know, it was beautiful. I could go on and on. It was a beautiful time, and uh, once again, my family, thank you for inviting us. We enjoyed ourselves. No oh, man, you know that's uh, it was you know, uh, Josh and them picked the site out. They they looked at a bunch of places and stuff, you know. So, and then I was talking to uh somebody. I think it was a Vaju saying, "Can we come back here the next year?" You know, so get the same spot as we did, so we'll know what to expect and. And everything, so then it might, you know, maybe you can get the same spot for your camper and everything. You know, I don't know. <laughs> hey, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed the park. I enjoyed everywhere we were at was a blessing, most definitely, most definitely. Hallelujah. 
as we begin, Jasher, because we got to get through the end of this. I really need to finish this tonight. We may run over a little bit. Um, I'm going to start off reading, and if anybody got anything as we move, just stop them. And we know we finished last week. We actually read some of 88, not last week, but it's been so many weeks I kind of forgot where we were at, so. But Moshe has passed away, and it's the ended 87 ended with, um, excuse me, chapter 87, verse 11 says, and the children of Yasharal, and the children of Yasharal wept for Moshe in the plains of Moab for 30 days. And the days of weeping and mourning for Moshe were completed. So when Moshe died, they stayed where he went up on the mountain. And um, we know that he went up on the mountain and Yah called him home or he gave up the ghosts, as the scripture would say. Um, in a place, in, on a, in a mountain range in what's Moab, but would really be part of ancient Yasharal. Um, so chapter 88, after the death of Moshe, it, um, forgive me chapter 88 says and it was after the death of moshe that yahuwah said to Yeho uh yahushua the son of nun saying and um his name all right here let me bring up the definition of his name um to start off in this um yahushua some people say yahusha um yeshua and it means yah or Yahu, Yahuwah, Yahuwah saved. Um, so after Moshe's death, Yahuwah said to him, the son of Nun, Yahushua, the son of Nun, saying, rise up and pass the, the Jordan to the land which I have given to the children of Yasharal, and thou shalt make the children of Yasharal inherit the land. Every place upon which the sole of your feet shall tread shall belong to you. From the wilderness of Lebanon unto the great river, the river of Parah, shall be your boundary. Every place where your feet shall pass is going to belong to you. Hallelujah. No man shall stand up against thee all the days of thy life, as I was with Moshe. So will I be with thee. Only be strong and of good courage to observe all the law which Moshe commanded thee. Turn not from the way either to the right or the left in order that thou mayest prosper in all that thou do. And that command is still to us today. Um, I don't know. Lately, I just got this thing that's been on my mind of, of, about that. Like, um, we got to be of good courage to observe all the law which Moshe command. Turn neither to the right or the left, no matter how, how tight it get. And that's the trial and tribulation. The trial and tribulation that Abba Yah allow us still, even in this truth as we grow in the word of Yah to go through, is to see if we're going to turn to the right or the left, or are we going to stay um, focused on the mark and of good courage to observe the law in order that we may prosper. And in that prosperity, we know that the prosperity of Yah comes with Shalom. And I, I, that's a mind state we have to stay in today because yes, there is things going on with us, with our families, Things that bother you, but that's the test to see if you'll turn to the right or the left. And as long as we stay on point, no matter what nobody else is doing, too, it may be somebody you love that want to go right or left. Don't go with them. Stay on point. And that's the way we'll prosper. And I firmly believe that as long as we stay on point, then and we praying, if it be Yah's will, he'll make a way for our people that we love that go to the right or the left to come back too. I really believe that. And Yahushua commanded the officers of Yasharal, saying, pass through the camp and command the people, saying, prepare for yourselves provisions, for in three days more you will pass the Jordan to possess the land. And the officers of the children of Yasharal did so, and they commanded the people, and they did all that Yahushua had commanded. And Yahushua sent two men to spy out the land of Jericho, and the men went and spied out uh, Jericho. And at the end of seven days, they came to Yahushua in the camp and said to him, Yahuwah has delivered the whole land into our hand. And the inhabitants thereof are melted with fear because of us. And, you know, we were reading this on Shabbat. Isaiah was saying this as well. In the last days, he was, he was saying that the world is going to, and you know, that's funny because that's this is actually a precept for that. I didn't even think of that. But in these last days, the world is going to fear you. 
they're going to fear what the what the most high is revealing in you and what he's doing for us um as we when we were read isaiah chapter 33 this last week he spoke of the fear of yah being on the world pertaining to us and this is an example these people in jericho which we understand the story is a fortified city big walls heart you can't just penetrate it physically but they're scared because they already have heard that Israel has an Elohim that fight for them. So it ain't just about us. It's about the Elohim that fights for us. But we understand from, from where we're coming to now that that only takes place if we're fighting to be with our Elohim. And it came to pass that it came to pass after that that Yahushua rose up in the morning and all Yasharal with him and they journeyed from Shittim. And Yahushua and all of Yasharal with him passed the Jordan. And Yahushua was 82 years old when he passed the Jordan with Yasharal. Let that be a note. You ain't never too old to do the work of Yah. <laughs> Literally. He was 82. Moses was still doing the work of him. He was 120. Until our life is over, never think that you're too old to go and do the work of Yah. You can be any age and he'll call you. And the people went up from Jordan on the 10th day of the first month. And they encamped in Gilgal at the eastern corner of Jericho. And the children of Yasharal kept the Passover in Gilgal in the plains of Jericho on the 14th day of the month, as it is written in the law of Moshe. Hallelujah. And the manna ceased at that time on the morrow of the Passover. And there was no more manna for the children of Yasharal. And they ate of the produce of the land of Canaan. Look, y'all fed them with manna all through the wilderness. As soon as they came into the land, they ate of the produce of their own land, as y'all said that we would do. In a land of milk and honey, a plush land, not this desert that we see on TV today. This was a plush land, a fertile land. <laughs> and Jericho was entirely closed against the children of Yasharal. No one came out or went in. And it was in the second month on the first day. So two weeks later, I guess, is the way you look at it. A couple weeks later, that Yahuwah said to Yahushua, rise up. Behold, I have given Jericho into thy hand with all the people thereof. And all your fighting men shall go round the city, one each day. Thus shall you do for six days. And the priest shall blow upon trumpets. And when you shall hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall give a great shouting that the walls of the city shall fall down. All the people shall go up every man against his opponent. And, you know, interesting thing about this is um, this is just like Revelation when Yah blows all the trumpets and, um, you know, on the sixth trumpet, it says it fell quiet in heaven. And then when the seventh trumpet sounded, it was a great noise and shouting in heaven and all the walls of the world fell and the kingdoms were given over to our king. Um, we're not going to, I ain't going to really dwell here, but there is a, um, there is a, um, the word I'm looking for, there's a, he, this is a, um, 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 like a foreshadowing of, the trumpets in Revelation. If you if you ever want to read this story of Jericho and us surrounding, going around the building, and we were quiet and the trumpets blowing, and if you ever wanted to uh, do a, a comparative read between this and the trumpets in Revelation, it's a really good read. But we know that when the seventh trumpet blew and everybody shouted, the walls fell down, and Yahushua did so according to all that Yahuwah had commanded him. And on the seventh day, they went round the city seven times and the priests blew up on trumpets. And it's, that's just like Revelation where not necessarily the seven times, but it, it, they was quiet when they blew. You get this shouting, as it says in verse 18. And at the seventh round, Yahushua said to the people, shout for Yahuwah has delivered the whole city into our hands. At the seventh trumpet of Revelation, it said that they were, it was quiet in heaven at the sixth trumpet. And then at the seventh one, it was great noises and thunder and, all the walls of the world fell down and the kingdoms was given to a Mashiach. And this is a, this is a really good comparative read here. It says only the city and all that it contains shall be a curse. And the fact that these people were already scared of them, just like we know in these last days, the scripture in Isaiah was just telling us on Shabbat that they'll be scared of us 
or our descendants, the ones who are following Yah, um, the whole scene is a is a is a is a is a is a play of the end times, but on a smaller scale, because we understand that the trumpets in the last days is gonna, the world is gonna fall, not just Jericho. Only the city and all that it contains shall be accursed to Yahuwah. And keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make the camp of Yasharal accursed and troubling. Don't take nothing. I'm letting you get spoils in other spots. Don't take nothing out of Jericho. For whatever reason, Yah's like, nah, you don't need nothing they had. But all the silver and gold and brass and iron shall be consecrated to Yah. They shall come into the treasury of Yahuwah. All of the gold, silver, and brass here is to come to the treasury of Yah. Other than that, Israel, you just take this city, but don't, don't be trying to keep their possessions. And the people blew up on trumpets and made a great shouting. And the walls of Jericho fell down, and all the people went up, every man straight before him, and they took the city and utterly destroyed all that was in it, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep, and ass or donkey with the edge of the sword. So it sounds like Israel was obedient here. They destroyed everything in the city like Yah told them, which we know Israel didn't always do this like Yah told them, right? And they burned the whole city with fire. Only the vessels of silver, gold, brass, and iron they put into the treasury of Yah. And Yahushua swore at that time saying, curse be the man who builds Jericho. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Israel is going to build this. Um, not for sure. Because I know people going to go on to live here. I don't know if they build walls there. Don't let me say that. He shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn. And in his youngest son shall he set up the gates thereof. And Akan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zebedee, uh, uh, Zabdi, the son of Zerah, son of Yehuda, dealt treacherously in the accursed thing. And he took of the accursed thing and hid it in the tent. And the anger of Yah was kindled against Yasharal, somebody from Yehuda. It was a hard head Israelite, took some, he knew he ain't had no business taken. And it was after this when the children of Yasharal had returned from burning Jericho, Yahushua sent me in to spy out also I and to fight against them. And the men went up and spied out I, and they returned and said, let not all the people go up with thee to I. Only let about 3,000 men go up and smite the city, for the men thereof are but few. So I was a smaller spot. And like, we don't need the whole army. Just send, you know, 3,000 of our baddest men, and we got it. And Yahushua did so, and there went up with them, with him, of the children of Yasharal, about 3,000 men. And they fought against the men of I. And the battle was severe against Yasharal, and the men of I smote 36 men of Yasharal, and the children of Yasharal fled from before the men of I. And when Yahushua saw this thing, he tore his garment and fell up on his face to the ground before Yahuwah. He with the elders of Yasharal, and they put dust upon their heads. And Yahushua said, why, O Yah, did thou bring this people over the Jordan? What shall I say after the Israelites have turned their backs against their enemies? Basically, this is our first loss. You said you got us. <laughs> this is the first time we got, and we really didn't lose because they don't even tell us how many people from Isla smoke, but we was fought to a standstill. You told us you had us. What, what went wrong here? Um, it says, now, therefore, all the Canaanites inhabitants of the land will hear this thing and surround us and cut off our name because it's a fear. And it speaks once again. There is a fear in this land of the on these people, not because they're bigger, faster, stronger, cooler, great warriors, which all of our people have all these things. But the fear is their Elohim fights for them. Our Elohims don't. We pray to them and go to these temples and do this and do that. They not coming for us like he coming for them. Though. And now that they took an L, Joshua or Yahushua, like these other people going to hear this and they might want to try us now behind this. It says, and, and Yahuwah said to Yahushua, why do thou fall upon thy face? Rise, get thee off, for the Israelites have sinned and taken of the accursed thing. I told y'all don't take none. Somebody that took some. I will no more be with them unless they destroy the accursed thing from amongst them. And Yahushua rose up and assembled the people and brought the Urim by the order of Yah, and the tribe of Yehuda was taken, and Akin, the son of Carmi, was taken. 
And it's that Urim and Thurim. I think it, it talks about like that the, the priest would have on the breastplate, which I want to say my Akobadaya once said that it was like kind of like almost like a radio to where they would speak to this thing and Yah would speak to them from it, which is interesting. Um, I also believe when they crossed the Jordan, and one of you can correct me when I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, but I also believe when they crossed the Jordan that he took away the fire and the pillar of cloud that would go over the Ark of the Covenant at that time from them too. Because you don't really hear the Urim or the Thummim being needed when that's there because they would just go to the temple and the presence of Yah would speak to them like that, which we understand that to be Yahushua, which is why the symbolism of, of Yahushua leading them into a land because this spear that's been this fiery pillar and day and cloud by night or whatnot has been um, Yahushua leading them the whole time. It's a it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a comparative read that can go right there as well. But now that that's gone, now they need the Urim and Thummim. And I, I mean, you really don't need anything. Yah can speak to you anywhere, but he's a he's allowing them to use this for whatever reason. And Yahushua said to Akan, tell me, my son, what hast thou done? And Akan said, I saw amongst the spoil a goodly garment of Shinar and 200 shekels of silver. He kept a garment from Babylon, something fresh. <laughs> he done went through there, man. Somebody done had some Chanel or something, some Louis in their closet. He like, I need that Louis jacket. Knowing y'all just told him. Hey, you know the, the, the irony in that is, um, because of the way our people live today, that's something somebody amongst our people would do today. Knowing y'all said, don't do that and get over there and see some red bottoms or something. And somebody being cuffed them like them slick and then got the whole camp judged, sadly. And a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. I coveted them and took them and behold, they are all hid in the earth in the midst of the tent. And you know what? It's bigger than that because now he didn't sin. He broke a commandment. He said he coveted. We're not, we aren't to covet anything, right? And Yahushua sent men who took and who went and took them from the tent of Akan, and they brought them to Yahushua. And Yahushua took Akan and these utensils and his sons and daughters and all belonging to him. And they brought them into the valley of Akor. And Yahushua burned them there with fire. And all the Israelites stoned Akan with stones, and they raised over him a heap of stones. Therefore did he call that place the valley of Akor, so that Yahuwah's anger was appeased. And Yahushua afterward came to the city and fought against it. And you know, that's that that's very interesting that because Yah could have easily just punished them, but he made Israel, we had to punish our own brothers um, for this. And we see that our people weren't hesitant in doing it, knowing that, um, and I'm sure of nothing else, the 36 families who had all just lost a family member, a father, a brother, a, a husband. They was probably the first ones like, nah, we ain't feeling that. I just lost, you know, we just lost a mighty man in our household because you done stole a pair of Jordans. <laughs> Maybe you wasn't a pair of Jordans, but it was a something from Babylon, which it's a lot of symbolism, symbolism in that with this materialistic mentality that our people have. And I, not just our people, because the world has, but Israel, true Israel definitely has. Hey, um, I know we spoke on the Shabbat. At least I brought up how right in our neighborhoods, we kill each other for Jordans, for Babylonian goodly garments, right? We'll kill each other for, or we see the videos where our youth be running in these stores, snatching all of these Gucci hoodies. Like, we see that that ain't a new thing. Our people have, uh, at least some of our people have always had a problem with um, garments, right? That's pleasing to the eye. It says, Joshua afterward came to the city and fought against it. And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, fear not, neither be thou dismayed. He had to reaffirm, he had to reaffirm with him. Look, I know y'all a little shook up, but y'all good. Now that's gone. Go back up there and get the city now. Behold, I have given into the hand, thy hand I, her king and her people. And thou shalt do unto them as thou, as thou did to Jericho and her king. Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall you take for a prey for yourselves. Lay an ambush for the city behind it. So in this, you could take the spoil and the cattle. 
for yourselves. This he ain't say burn everything now. Like, so now is your chance to get some little things or whatever they got, right? So Yahushua did according to the word of Yah, and he chose from amongst the sons of war 30,000. So this time, we ain't going up here with 3,000. Y'all done killed 36 brothers. We coming deep this time. And he sent them, and they lay in ambush for the city. And he commanded them, saying, when you shall see us, we will flee before them with cunning, and they will pursue us. You shall then rise out of the ambush and take the city, and they did so. Smart generals, look, we're gonna go up just a little deep. They just had they just they just fought us to a standstill. They probably feeling they self. When they come out and chase us, thinking we running off again, then y'all come out and ambush. You know, don't let them lock the door to that gate. When y'all come out, y'all surround the ones chasing us, and a lot of y'all need to flood into the city. Don't let them lock the gate behind, them, right? I don't know that's what he said, but it just I just hear that. And Yahushua fought, and the men of the city went out toward Yasharal not knowing that they were lying in ambush for them behind the city. And Yahushua and all the Israelites feigned themselves, wearied out before them, and they fled by the way of the wilderness with cunning. So they, they act like they was exhausted from battle again, losing. They said to sell that job on them. And the men of Ai gathered all the people who were in the city to pursue the Israelites. And they went out and were drawn away from the city. Not one remained. And they left the city open and pursued the Israelites. Because the people of Ai probably cocked. Probably done sent word to these other cities like y'all scared of these Israelites. They ain't come up here and whoop us. We handed it to them. We ain't Moab and we ain't Midian. And we ain't all these other people who they didn't came through already. No, we fought them to a standstill. We ain't scared of them like y'all. No, they was cocky in the area. And those who were lying in ambush rose up out of their places and hastened to come to the city and took it and set it on fire. And the men of I turned back and behold, the smoke of the city ascended to the skies and they had no means of retreating either one way or the other. So now they surrounded and they looking back and they see smoke coming from their city. That had to be um, pretty terrifying. And all the men of I were in the midst of Yasharal some on this side and some on that side, and they smote them so that not one of them remained, killed them all. And the children of Yasharal took Melosh, king of Ai, alive, and they brought him to Yahushua, and Yahushua hanged him on a tree, and he died. So we see it was practice at this time to hang people in trees. And the children of Yasharal returned to the city after having burned it. And they smote all those that were in it with the edge of the sword. And the number of those that had fallen of the men of Ai, both man and woman, was 12,000. Only the cattle and the spoil of the city they took to themselves, according to the word of Yah to Yahushua. And all the kings on this side of Jordan, all the kings of Canaan, heard of the evil which the children of Yasharal had done to Jericho and to Ai. And they gathered themselves together to fight against Yasharal. So they like, we're going to have to, we're going to have to. Um, it's like Psalms 83, the crafty council. We're going to have to all come together to stop them. Only the inhabitants of Gibeon were greatly afraid of fighting against the Israelites, lest they should perish. So they acted cunningly, and they came to Yahushua and to all Israel and said to, unto them, we have come from a distant land. Now, therefore, make a covenant with us. And this is y'all letting us know, don't just be making no covenants with nobody. You don't know what you're doing. And the inhabitants of Gibeon overreached the children of Yasharal, and the children of Yasharal made a covenant with them, and they made shalom with them, and the princes of the congregation swore unto them. But afterward, the children of Yasharal knew that they were neighbors to them and were dwelling amongst them. They got tricked. But the children of Yasharal slew them not, for they had sworn to them by Yah, and they became ewers of wood and draws of water. We ain't gonna kill y'all, but y'all got to do some work, though. <laughs> y'all got y'all got to hold up y'all live we taking this land though but we ain't just gonna kill you like we doing these other folks but you got you got to do some work y'all know how our people is too it was some israelites amongst them who was like y'all lucky too boy <laughs> no it was some israelites who wasn't feeling that like man y'all lucky because we was coming to get this and Yahushua said to them, why did you deceive me to do this thing to us? And they answered him saying, because it was told to thy servants 
all that you had done to all the kings of the Amorites, and we were greatly afraid of our lives, and we did this thing. Once again, they was fearing them because of what Yah was leading them to do. And Yahushua appointed them on that day to you wood and to draw water, and he divided them for slaves to all the tribes of Yasharal. And when Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, heard all that the children of Yasharal had done to Jericho and to Ai, he sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, and to Paran, king of Yarmuth, and to Yephiah, Yephia, Yephiah, king of Lachish, and to Debur, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me, that we may smite the children of Yasharal and the inhabitants of Gibeon, who have made shalom with the children of Yasharal. And they gathered themselves together, and the five kings of the Amorites went up with all their camp, a mighty people, numerous as the sand of the seashore. They went out a thick army. And this truly reminds me of Psalms 83, and when Yah's letting us know that everybody has always been against Israel. We don't have any friends. Like even Gibeon, who is living amongst them to do this work, right? They aren't friends. They had to do this. They was being slick. That Your friend will never beat you. <laughs> he should never beat you, I should say. And all the kings came and encamped before Gibeon, and they began to fight against the inhabitants of Gibeon. And all the men of Gibeon sent to Yahushua, saying, come up quickly to us and help us. For all the kings of the Amorites have gathered together to fight against us, which is funny. You make this slick um, covenant with us. So Yah sent your own, <laughs> the people you already living amongst to come fight you. And we really, that wasn't part of the covenant. We didn't have to go up there and do nothing for them. But Yah sent their own people who wasn't in covenant with them to destroy them. Or he was he allowed them to come up on them. And Yahushua and all the fighting people went up to Gilgal. And Yahushua came suddenly to them and smote these five kings with a great slaughter. But Yah even allowed them to be saved by, by Yasharal. And Yahuwah confounded them before the children of Israel, children of Yasharal, who smote them with a terrible slaughter in Gibeon and pursued them along the way that goes up to Bet Horan and Makeda. And they fled from before the before the children of Yasharal. And while as they were fleeing, Yahuwah sent upon them hailstones from the Shemaim. And more of them died by hailstones than by the slaughter of the children of Yasharal. Remember, it said that these five kings were had an army numerous as the sand of the sea. It's a lot of them. We know it's at least 30,000 fighting men in Yasharal because we just seen Yahushua take 30,000 with him into the Battle of Ai. So if they numerous as the sand of the sea, possibly hundreds of thousands. And it said that Yah killed more of them by hailstones then by the edge of the sword, which is the slaughter of children of Yasharal, which is Yah letting us know once again, even though I may use you for this, none of you could still bring judgment like me. And that's something that we need to learn in this awakening. Because the way we hear some people speak in this awakening, we, we forget that there is no judgment like the judgment of Yah. We don't have enough guns. We don't have enough weaponry. We don't have enough. We don't have enough money to buy all this land. There is no judgment like the judgment of Yah. And the children of Yasharal pursued them and they smote them in the road going on and smiting them. And when they were smiting, the day was declining toward evening. And Yahushua said in the sight of all the people, son, stand still. Thou stand thou still upon Gibeon. And the moon in the valley of in the valley of Agilon, until the nation shall have a, revenged itself upon its enemies. So as the sun was 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 declining, not necessarily setting, it was still in the sky, but it was getting low. The moon was starting to rise, and I'm sure some of you have days. Now I've heard some people say they believe that it was an eclipse here. It could have been, I guess. But I also have seen days when. The sun is starting to decline in the west and the moon to be out. You can see the sun and the moon in the sky at the same time and it not be an eclipse. So either way, it says, And Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of Yahushua, and the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens. And it stood still six and thirty moments. And the moon also stood still and hastened not to go down a whole day. So 
we see that the sun is beginning to set, the nighttime is coming. Yahushua said, sun stands still and the stage still for a whole day, right? It's in the sky. And the moon, right? Through what would be the nighttime. And I, I think this might be the only time in the history of mankind where the sun was in the sky, where it should have been nighttime. Um, the sun would have been in the sky. Uh, I think it's interesting when you talk about places like uh, Serbia, even Alaska, places where they say that you have months of all daytime and then months of nighttime. Um, I don't know how that really worked, but where they're at, you don't have that. <laughs> this was a miracle. And I think it's the only day like that. Um, and if I had to guess, um, probably would guess that, and this is just my opinion, me guessing, but if I had to guess, I would guess that the entire world, wherever you were at, the sun stood still in the sky. But that's just my thought process. Verse 65, and there was no day like it, as he said, before it or after it, that Yahuwah hearkened to the voice of a man, for Yahuwah fought for Israel. And even that, don't let me gloss over the fact that Yahushua is a man and he was able to ask Yah to stand the sun still. <laughs> and Yah hearkened to that prayer. Um, and, and let that also be known amongst us too, that this is why we pray without ceasing, because we just never know what, what, what Yah will, will hearken to. Um, uh, I don't know if any of you are. I don't know what y'all got going on throughout your day, but I don't believe none of y'all are praying and asking Yah to stand the sun still for you. <laughs> um, oh, now you came, y'all might. He talking about he working hard out here. I don't know. But you just never know what Yah will answer for you. And he's showing us right here that one of our ancestors he asked for the sun not to go down, which is a, a, a big ask. And y'all hearken to it. Chapter 88, hallelujah. Any questions or comments about chapter 88 before we move forward? And this story is in Joshua, I believe, chapter 10, when y'all has the sun stand still. Um, if any of you want to read it, it's a very interesting story. Hallelujah. Anything anybody want to add or take away before we move forward from this? I saw you, Annie. Hallelujah. Uh, Shalom. So, um, you know, as a reading this, like, I just always had a question, you know, if the most high labels himself as love and kindness, I'm like, where's all this war? And he commanded him to um, destroy this nation and, and the children and, and, all, and everything. Right. And then um, I just had like, my spirit was just uneasy with the question because I, you know, we I'm not, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't know his ways. I don't, I, I don't know um everything that the most high uh does and, and everything like that. But then uh I just had this thought was like every nation is set against the children that he chose. He he's like, I gotta move. I chose them. I can't let nobody wipe them out. So he can hear every conversation that we can't hear. He can see every plot and plan that we don't see. And it's kind of like the most high knows that this nation, and, and it just kind of, you know, it just kind of eased my heart and knowing that like, you know, the most high sees it all. So he knows what, what's in somebody's heart um, and, and what these nations are going to plot and plan because of jealousy. And um, so he's like, okay, this nation got to go and I'm going to give you guys that land. Um, this nation got to go, you know, because I already know what they're capable of and what they're going to do and what they're plotting and planning to do. So I don't know if that made me feel good or just ease, answer my question or whatever. But, you know, I just always had a question about that. And then you had said something that kind of sparked that. And I was like, hmm, I see. I see a nation where the in, where all nations keep coming around against to put us in slavery to try to wipe us out out and do all that the most high is like i gotta do something you know what i'm saying i don't know because you know some people will be like oh no that's that's not true and you know and just stuff like that but i don't know hallelujah that that i got that question answered <laughs> no, hallelujah and you know you make a good point we don't hear the conversations these conversations may be we finna go eradicate yasha raw so you know we know i'll be pays in kind you know so 
that is an interesting thing. We also know the scriptures that said that he is a man of war, you know, and it, it, it's always got to be a correction. Um, I could also, and, and I, I'm just, you know, uh, just presenting a different side. We could also say that when Moses told Shem and Ham and Yafeth and all of them where they was going to go with their families, these people took a land that wasn't theirs. And uh, it, it could it possibly cons be considered stealing? And I want to say we believe in the I believe in the commandments. The the consequence of stealing could be death. So it's a lot of ways to look at that. But you are right. Um, I know that's something that vexes a lot of people. Like uh, I think part of it is the way we were raised to look at God and Jesus, what not too that. You read, when you actually read these scriptures, you actually see an Elohim that um, don't play about his people. <laughs> Hallelujah. You came, y'all. I see you. Uh. Yeah, Shalom. Yeah, that was the one that I wanted. I'm glad you mentioned it, that they were squatters on the land, so they, they, they could not keep a covenant. That was a covenant that they had with each other, with brothers. Brothers had a covenant, and they couldn't keep it, so they weren't going to keep a covenant with the most high. And it's just like the most high knows he looks down through the seed line and knows that that seed line is wicked and nobody's going to repent. And, you know, when the father kills out a whole nation and he kills the children, at least he gets the children's souls mm -hmm. and they don't replicate. They don't keep replicating evil souls. True. Right. If they just keep replicating evil souls, you let them live. That's a, I don't want, he's a, he's an Elohim of war, but he's also of mercy too. I want to cut them off right now because uh, one soul and, you know, at that time, you know, if that soul was to live on, that soul would replicate itself probably to a million by the day. Yeah. You know, so, 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 and none of that, seed, yeah, none of that seed line was going to be righteous. And then I, I was looking at the, uh, the, the, the nation that, that, you know, that feigned, uh, you know, they, they were the ones that had the, the, the molded bread and all that kind of stuff. And they were poor. But they ended up becoming hewers of wood and, 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 and stuff like that. But that's the same thing that's going to happen. Uh, not the exact same thing, but it's going to be other nations that are servants for us in the thousand year reign when sure. we go into the land. And so those people, if you even look at, I don't, were these the Jebusites? You yeah, the Jebusites? I hear they were um, Jibion, I guess. Bring this up because I know, I know, I know. Um, they come into they come in, they come back into the picture at Mount Moriah whenever David, if it's the Jebusites, they come back into the picture at Mount Moriah whenever David was doing the census and and the angels stopped at Mount Moriah at the threshing floor of the Jebusite. Mm -hmm. And then you know, David bought Mount Moriah, which is the Temple Mount, he bought that from that Onan, I think. I don't think these Onan, are Jebusites here. They're not the same people. Okay. But yeah. Um, so so the, the thing is, is that they, they went right into the servitude. Because the father was going to give them rest from coming out of Egypt. You see? Mm -hmm. And so he, 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 he got people and they were dispersed throughout the land and everybody had servants. Everybody had servants to come and start working the land. Because that was just all they were going to do was carry water and, and, and cut wood. They were going to do everything. Mm -hmm. for the children of Israel. So I know I know sometimes, you know, getting into the mindset of the way, the truth, and the life is different than the mindset of a Christian. Whenever the Father has given, when the Father has given you foundational things to not um, not to cross, like that's not your land, don't be there. And the Canaan, and Canaan said, nah, we're going to take this land, we're going to stay here. And yeah. that's why we even, call, we even call our land Canaan land. It ain't Canaan land, it's our land. But the thing about it is, is that these people said, I'm going to take it. And so they go to their, their descendants get punished for a, a, a decision that their forefathers did. We getting punished for the, for the stuff that our forefathers did. Right. We got we got double. We got wiped out. Everything that you see going on with these other nations, we don't we, we 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 did it, too. We don't got wiped out, just about wiped out by, you know, all over the world. Early. And it, we just we just come back. So don't feel sorry for these people because the father already knows that their souls. He says, "I give soul, I give men's lives for you." That's what he says over there in the prophets. I give men's lives for you. I think it's in Jeremiah. 
So that's what he's been, he, he's willing to do that for his life, you know, and it's a mercy by him killing off a nation that has no seed line that's ever going to repent. That's a mercy because they're going to keep replicating themselves evil upon evil. So that's how I see it in his wisdom. He's the smart one. And, and I think it just takes, um, you know, it just takes us dwelling with him and understanding, you know, that, you know, even though he doesn't act right on the Canaanite moving into the land back, way back, way back. Yes. He said, okay, I'm, I'm getting ready to catch him though. I'm, when I get him, I'm going to get him. And that's how it goes. That's, how, that's why he says the nations are nothing but spittle. Oh, we're not even going to we're not even gonna remember these nations, man, after we get into the land. Because Yahusha is the prince of all the kings of the earth. And you know what? That's what I was just gonna say, what you were saying. Um, we also see, like you said, you just brought up a good point. The symbolism of this being like the last days again, and the fact that it's a Yahusha who leading us in, a Yahusha coming back to lead us back. Um, other nations around being servants, as we see here. Um, and it speaks to his mercy. Because they stole this land thousands of years before this. They've been in that land. The Canaanites at this point in the game been in that land at least a thousand years, if not 1,500, 2,000, something close. So, and y'all show mercy. I'm going to give them a chance to repent and come out of there. But that's why he told Abraham, the iniquity of the Amorites ain't fulfilled. I'm going to give them some time to repent and they not. And now we're seeing, because like I say, um, to um. And the odds point at a glance is like, man, that's really harsh. <laughs> but now we're seeing that Yah has been patient with these folks in this land, and now the iniquity of the Amorites has been fulfilled. Um, so that's a really good point. We actually seeing that in real time today. It's sad to see that these hospitals and all that is getting knocked down on these Palestinians. But on the same token, y'all occupying our land, you squatters, and you ain't over there saying. You black folks in America, this really your land come back. No, you saying we want this land for ourselves. You acting like a Canaanite. So in one instance, it's like it's sad to see these people bullying these people, cutting off their water and starving them. On another point, though, it's like, yeah, you ain't doing right by what y'all say this land supposed to be either, though. You know? So it's I guess it's just a fine line. Um, but we actually you know, you seeing this take place in real time right now. Go ahead, Ock. You know, you know, uh, the way that I deal with that is when he says vengeance is mine, you keep your mouth shut on the Internet about what's going on with them over there. Like when I, you know, like when they, they Gaza's the hospital has been blown up because really this thing looks like it's something that Netanyahu set up with with Hamas anyway. Like he just like, hey, go in and create some drama and send some of your crazy guys in there. We're going to just going to clean out this whole area anyway. Right. So, you know, it's like, you know, we don't know how all of that's going down. But you know, when you when you start when you start thinking about it, you know, none of them belong there. And so the way that we deal with it is we don't jump up and down when we see stuff going on because he says, don't celebrate for that. He says, celebrate for you. He says, have joy that your name is in the book of life. So you keep your mouth shut, you let those people do what they gonna the father gonna take care of that. That's how I look at it. I'm 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 satisfied with whatever goes down with these nations. Mm -hmm. And I don't look and I don't look and try to have an opinion on it because everything is inside. It's just like the song that we sung when we were kids. He got the whole world in his hand. I ain't worried about all of these details of who's getting killed and this, that, and the third. The biggest thing about the awakening is we are awakening, especially in the Western Hemisphere, South America, the Caribbean, and the United States. And we know we're awakening all over in the, in the Eastern Hemisphere. So that's the biggest thing that we have to do, that we're repenting. And, you know, and we know that uh, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living Elohim. And that's what they've done. And I'm not going to sit up here and have an opinion about it one way or the other. Nobody's going to ever hear me say anything about uh, a good riddance or anything like that. Because I don't, that's me taking vengeance with my own tongue. I'm like, whatever the father does is done. And there's no false move out here. There's no move happening in the world that the father's not having no, nothing to do with. True. So, and, like, we thinking it's some random power of Satan. No, man. No. This and, thing has already been, this thing has already been, Babylon's already fallen. Can you deal with them falling? Because if you know. can't deal with them falling, you're going to look back like Lot's wife. True. They've fallen. They got to yeah. deal with, they got to deal with. Nobody was talking about 
of uh, people killing killing my ancestors here in Orange County, Alamance County, 150 hey, years hey, ago. Exactly. And and that's what we got an opinion about what didn't happen with Yasharal. But also to your point though, and I had to tell somebody this, a Muslim the other day. It ain't for, like you said, it ain't for me to have an opinion because the Muslim nations right around them ain't got an opinion. I don't hear Jordan and Saudi Arabia and Qatar and all them nations. They ain't saying nothing. So it definitely ain't my place to say nothing. A, nobody came to defend the African-American and the slave. Not even these Muslims here. These Muslims here that felt like they was better than Negroes for the longest too. 9-11 was the first time they kind of stood down, but even then, they still think they better than Negroes. Now they want Negroes to come defend their cause. And y'all don't come defend no Negroes' cause. So it 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 it, it we seeing all this play out in real time right now. And y'all, I see your hand. Dang, my children had to unplug the Wi-Fi, so I kind of missed out what um our Kenya was saying. Um but I had I was just thinking about that and I was like, hmm, I wonder if these because I know that in scripture it says, surely our father had inherited our fathers have uh, you know, passed down lies to us. So Ooh. um I was thinking about that. Like, you know, that I know we all have to pay for our wrongdoings and the wrongdoings of our ancestors because you know our ancestors did the most wicked thing and said let it be on our hands and on the hands of blood let his blood be on our hands and our children's children and if it wasn't for you who was just saying father forgive them for they know not what they're doing you know what i'm saying and what, not him not fulfilling what he came to do who knows where we would be at as y'all's chosen people but uh i guess my question is is um will they know would they know why these things are happening? Like when it's really biblically like, uh, and not the enemy just doing stuff. Like when it's when it comes down to real biblical truth, it says that everybody's going to know the truth. Do you think that um, the truth, I don't, do you think that the truth has reached all the people in the nation? Do you think that they have an idea that, uh oh, you know, they're they're waking up? Or maybe they do know. Maybe they conspire with each other. Maybe all the nations know, but maybe their descendants know. I don't know. I just always kind of felt kind of not guilty, but bad for thinking that way. Like, oh my gosh, like, I guess my heart is different. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? My heart is different. Like, oh my God, like, I know that everyone has to go through what they have to go through. And I think it's just because maybe I'm a woman or maybe just the way my heart is built. But I just hate seeing it, you know? But at the end of the day, you know, most of like, look, Look what they've done. You don't even know the atrocities that they have done. Exactly. And um, but yeah, I wonder if the nations know. <laughs> no, I, I believe that they definitely know. Now that ain't saying that everybody in every nation know, but these leaders definitely know. And I believe that truth has been spoken in many nations. To your point, if you listen to the Palestinians and Arab nations when they do talk about Israel, they'll call them colonizers, they'll call them occupiers, they'll they'll speak rhetoric saying. You all don't belong here. The problem with that is, is they won't turn around and say who do. See, they want to claim it for themselves. So, and and it's just our condition being that we done went through what we done been through. Our people just care about everything, whether right or wrong. Um, it's just an Israelite thing. It ain't even about men or women. Our people just care. Um, we hate to see people go through what we done been through. But on the same talk, I think part of that is still the slave mentality of, of you know, um, how we've been taught to just forgive and to pray for everybody. And, you know, a, a lot of things are at play there, but that's our people in general. That ain't just you. Because like I said, even I see some videos and it's like, man, that look messed up. But on the same token, when I lean the scripture, I understand that things got to be what they got to be. And what you just said really stood out. The scripture where it says they have inherited lies. I think that's in Isaiah. It might be in Jeremiah. Um, I'm not sure, but it made me think to the point that um, who knows, this situation may make them people start saying, you know what, we didn't inherit it lies. Who knows, this situation may make them people start saying, you know what, them people really, them people. Because it's known. Understand that it's known. Remember, it is Israelites in Demona over there in Israel. So these Palestinians is bumping into them Negroes who over there saying this really our land, even if they had never heard. 
The Israelites is on these corners in New York, in Chicago, not saying they right or wrong, mostly wrong, but <laughs> when they talk about we Israel, it's Palestinians and just Muslims in general right here in America walking past them and hearing that too. So, oh, it's known. It's about what you're going to do with it. Same with our people. It's black folks who didn't heard they Israel. It's about what you're going to do with it. You came, y'all. Yeah, I was looking for one thing that one thing that you can kind of check with um, Anaya is um, the double. So if you look up this word, the double, we got the double. I was trying to look at it on my phone. I don't have my glasses. But we got recompensed the double for our iniquity. They're going to get the double too. So you have to start looking at Torah. It's like I had, uh, um, had alluded to a little bit. He touched on it. But all of this is Torah. It is. So if you take if you take somebody's land, or if you steal people, or if you kill people, all of this is Torah exacted back upon the nations. So don't think of it as, oh, it's wild and stuff like because the stuff that was going on with you, the father made sure that he he put it out in the word that no man will save you. True. Ain't nobody gonna save you. I'm not gonna let nobody save you because you got to catch this double. True. But once I pull this iniquity back and I pull this captivity back, the nation's got to drink of the dregs. That's the if you ever drink any wine and you leave the cup overnight in this in the sink and you see it as that part that's still stuck in the bottom of the cup, the glass, is that wine is still stuck down in there, they got to drink that too. They got to drink the dregs. They're going to get the double and they got to drink all of it. That's that wrath. True. Right. They got to get it all because we got it all. You coming out of it. That's the reason why uh, we look around and we don't have we don't have complete family units. We don't have complete family units because of the curses. We don't have complete health because of the curses. We, we killing somebody tonight. Somebody getting ready to ride on somebody tonight in L.A. and in Chicago right now because of the curses. So don't look at these nations and these babies dying over there and stuff like that. That's their situation that they got to deal with because they are idolaters and they understood that they were not supposed to be in the land in the first place. And they lied and did whatever they had to do to get our spot because everywhere they live, an Israelite lived in. That's a true, true Israelite lived in that land. That's so true. you can't look at it. You have to look at it from what's justice. And the thing about it is, is when the father tells people and warns them, the people that understood that the father wasn't playing, they weren't going to come back into uh, this place that's quote unquote the Holy Land and try to stoop on the Holy Land and wait there and let their and let their uh, progeny and their children stay there because their children going to get killed. Because they're squatters. The, everybody knows that it's not their land. True. Because they, the reason that you know that they know it's not their land because they never talk about whose land it really is. Oh, they don't. But they'll tell you it ain't them Jews land in the heart. That's right. That's right. They try to tell. They try. See, there's this there's this thing going on with Christianity and Ashkenazi Judaism. Everybody tries to make those two things be like they're kind of right. They're not right. Right. And no matter no kind of way that you see them, they're not correct. They are idolatry. Sure. And that's what we. That's why the Father is purging it the way He's doing it. This is the reason why He's showing that He's got America joining in. Those people in the Gaza right now cannot leave but they're going to continue to blow it up mm -hmm. that's and america is joining in on that now that blood is on america's hands i don't care about america because i'm not this is i'm not I'm, i mean you know i'm i'm I, that's not my that's not my country this is a right. country of my this is the my captives country and so i live here and it tells me in the scriptures to live peaceably and to keep the law because i've been placed here as my ancestors were placed in Babylon, as they were placed in Persia, as they were placed in where Rome, or they were placed in Greece. We had we got to live by these people's laws because this is our punishment. We got to walk our punishment out. We see what happens when we try to jet and leave our punishment like Zedekiah. You're going to get this punishment. You're going to get this whooping. But I'm going to pull this whooping up off of you, and you ain't got to deal with these doubles no more. They get the doubles. And they get the double of what you had, which is four times. Mm. And they're supposed to get it. And I don't I don't I don't worry about it because when the children are dying, at least we get those souls. 
We're going to get those souls at least. Of those people over there, the children that die, at least the father can get them. But the other ones that have grown full grown, I look at it as they they were going to believe in their idolatrous God, their, 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 their patron deity. And they were never going to repent. But at least, at least the children can. No, the children can come into the kingdom. That's how I see these killings whenever the father says, wipe everybody out. He's getting the souls of the children and cutting the seed line off. And that's a mercy for people who ain't going to turn back no way. And to your point, I, to your point, right? In the Quran, it says that the covenant was made with Israel. Later in the Quran, it tries to say that because of, I'm not even sure to pinpoint action, but I think it's actually the killing of Yahushua, which they call Yeshua, Y-E-S-H-U-A. That's what they call, who we call, who, who the, the Christians call Jesus. In the Quran, he is presented, right, as Yeshua, Y-E-S-H-U-A. -E they say that he was not the son of God, though he was just the last prophet in the line of Israel. And when he died somewhere in that point, Yah took the covenant from Israel and gave it to the seed of Islam. And then Mohammed comes as this prophet 700 years later. The point why I bring that up is because, the reason I bring that up is because they know that land ain't theirs too. See, their thing is we just been living here, but they know that land ain't theirs. And to your point about the idolatry and the false doctrine, their false doctrine has been passed to them, got them thinking that this covenant had been taken from Yahshua Raul and given to them. We know that the Yah says in this, Genesis and all these Old Testament books that the covenant is forever. The catch with them is, is the Quran is really all Old Testament. They believe in Moses. They believe in all the prophets. They believe in King David. All the way up into the covenant with Israel being forever. That's what they don't believe. That's on them. Just like it done been on us, right? To the point of the, the right. Ashkenazi, he definitely know better. <laughs> He know better right. because his people was in Spain with our people when the Spanish Inquisition and all that happened. He been knew better. So to any y'all's point, that's just the human in us to see that and be like, that's messed up. But when you look at it through Torah, nah, is that right? It's, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. Right. And, and I wanted to add this. If somebody, if the judgment came down from the priest and from the elders that we have to go stone this this family's son because he's a he's a wine bibber and he's and he and he uh he said something to their parents because that was a uh he said something against their parents uh we have to go stone them everybody got to go outside the city and stone them you might not want it to but you had to pick your rock up and throw your rock over there at him we just now, you, ironically we just read that yeah, right you gonna have to first thing I'm sure it was some right. flights it was like we can't stone him. He might have right. been full ock. His family might have been good people. But we just read that. It was some Israelites that said that all Israel threw a heap of stone on them for what they did. So that, that's a really good point. We actually just read a right. situation like that. And it, and, it, and the thing, what it does is, is that, 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 stops the, that, that stops the jealousy of our, of our husband. He's jealous. He wants your whole heart fine because he already is telling you, this person's cut off. Execute the judgment and do it and do it quickly. And that's like he was telling he was telling um, Aaron, don't be crying for these boys that had this strange fire. You better not cry. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, that's just as bad as watching these children get blown up in these hospitals, True. right? It's just a thing like, man, wow, this is crazy, but I got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the because Yahuwah is the smart one. Is he your real, is he, I'm not, I'm not challenging you, Anaya, but I'm talking about, I have to ask myself, is he my Elohim or not? Yeah. Do I believe in his infinite wisdom? Wisdom is one of his facets of his spirit that is said in Isaiah chapter 11. It's wisdom, knowledge, understanding, right? Might, counsel, mm -hmm. fear, and the spirit. I, I, don't, I don't possess any of that stuff innately. I've got to get that from him. And he's telling me, eradicate these people. He told you in Deuteronomy 6, if you didn't keep his Torah, he's going to wipe you off the face of the earth. You know, he uh, says that in Deuteronomy 6, I will wipe you off the face of the earth. Uh, look, true. look, I'm trying to, I mean, he, he don't, he don't come at us like that. Like, you know, check yourself because I'm your daddy. Yeah. And you, you know, and you, you, you got to check yourself. And it's, it's just a, it's just a maturity thing. And I know it seems, but it's not unrighteous. It is Torah. Torah is instruction to get us to the place where there is no wickedness on earth. 
uh, Troy. That's what it's about. Two other examples is the one judge who was like, if we win this battle, I'll sacrifice whatever come out of my house. And it was his daughter. <laughs> you know right. that to her. That hurt all of the women that was around. They said she went in the mountains and the women was with her for a long period of time. And every year people would come and cry. But it, you know, we think about judgment. Judgment ain't always gonna be pretty. Um, it has to happen. I had another example in mind, but I forgot. And yeah, I see your hand again. Go ahead. You know, I'm sorry. I know we gotta keep moving, but it's just like I'm sorry. It to it it really, yeah, it really answers the questions inside of myself because like for a long time I just had that pain there, you know? And I'm just like, but you know, my constantly saying, but yeah, why? But yeah, like, and I kind of like gloss over that. When I read about it, I gloss over it because I'm like, nah, not yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think like you're saying, it's, it's just because we're a very hurt people and we've been taught that no matter what you need to love and do this and all that. Um, and I guess, I guess that there was just some conflict within myself with that. And um, so when I think about the terms and being cut off, right. When the most high says, uh, nah, stone them, they're cut off. Now I think about Adam or Adam and Chihuahua, Adam and Eve in the garden, they directly disobeyed the word. They walked with Yah like in the garden and he direct and they directly went against the most high's commandment right but then he still had mercy upon him because he what if you know who's he could have just destroyed a diamond and just created a new diamond but it, it speaks to his mercy to me of of his people so yeah maybe he had cut their life short but i always think about their soul and their spirit like i wonder if y'all forgave them you know I wonder if they were repenting, like, Father, we're sorry. We should have never did that, you know, in the midst of dying or or whatever, you know. It just always has me wonder about that because it's just like, you know, the most high has, you know, like, yeah, he's merciful for his people. But when he say don't do something, don't do it. You know what I'm saying? And I know that we fall and we and we um we fall and we we get back up when we fall. And I don't know. I guess I always just wondered about they soul. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know he's he's forgiving, but, you know, for the children, like you said, I like what you came in and said. He said, at least I'll have the children, you know, because who knows what, what the Ox family would have did after the whole Yasharal stoning him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, His family made all that bitterness and anger in their heart. Like, I, y'all, I watched y'all stone my daddy. I watched y'all stone my husband. I never yeah. feel some of y'all. We see that. Yeah. We see that now in these neighborhoods. Like our generations grew up, people would still fight. It wasn't a bunch of guns. So when you fight somebody, you could be mad at them, but y'all can make amends for that. If you didn't kill my daddy, my brother, we can never be cool. We see that go on now. I've seen young men my age, when we was in our teenagers, they daddies in gang, somebody killed their daddy. And I know me and my age who grew over to be men and shot the man who shot his daddy. So you are exactly right. Once the stone started, it got to go that way because you never know how that'd go. And so I just, have, I just wanted to pose a question to you too as well about Yahusha himself. Like, because when he said, so we thinking about the, the adulterous woman, right? And, and he say, let he without sin cast the first stone, right? Mm -hmm. So how does, like, because I'm trying to explain, like, I'm trying to get an understanding for myself so when it does come up, then I can be able to, like, kind of explain to someone, and because I feel like it's coming. I feel like someone's going to about to challenge me in the scriptures, or I just feel like there's going to be a point where I'm going to have to explain something to somebody, especially this, because I got a question, uh, I got a kind of, not a rebuke, but, like, somebody was kind of attacking Israel, Israelites and saying, oh, y'all this and y'all that. Um, but, you know, and I didn't know how to respond, you know, so. Oh, on um, that one, on that one right there, if you go back, I can't, I, I have to go back and find it in Torah, but you have to have both the male and the female adulterer. So they they came in with, uh, they didn't, they weren't adjudicating it right. So if you look at, if you look at uh, the, the Ruach, in uh, Isaiah chapter 11, what, what's the part of it? It's called counsel. 
and wisdom, right? And knowledge. Those are the parts of the spirit. They didn't, they were not acting in the spirit because they didn't have a uh, violator. You can't just kill the female violator. And that's where you was looking at it because those who brought the accusation should have been stoned. They should have known that if we're not going to bring the male acute, the male, um, a violator, we can't bring this woman. So they were already in violation of Torah. That's why he started. That's why he, he was kneeling down and said, him without first him out without stone, him without cast the first stone. And they left from the oldest to the youngest. And then there was nobody left but him and her. And said, Woman, you're 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 forgiven. Because he's he's trying to show that hey, this whole situation was a was um uh, few it was, it was it was an accuser, but they were they were trying to catch, they were trying to catch Yahusha in violation too, because if he would have let them kill her, he would have been in violation of Torah. Ain't no question. See, they they understand what they were trying to do, right? So you that's the reason why people say Torah, Torah, Torah. Yeah, just read over it. Look, it makes sense. It's it's the alphabet of your language. You know, you use your alphabet every day, but you don't say your ABCs every time you wake up. But you know, and that's how the Israelite was with Torah. They knew that they knew it like the alphabet. Mm-hmm. So they were trying to catch him. They were trying to catch him in a in a in a in a, in a judgment. But see, he has the spirit. He has it without measure. So he had counsel. He had knowledge. He had wisdom. He had might. Right. He had the fear of Yahuwah. So he was not going to judge against anybody because he feared Yah. He's not going to do anything that's not Torah. And he embodied the word, as it says in the first chapter of John. He is the word. So that's how you that's how you basically just stay on that topic right there. Just tell them, hey, they didn't have, they didn't, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't Torah. They weren't in Torah. They weren't using instruction. Hey, right? They wanted to kill, they wanted to kill her. I'm sorry, uh, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, and to the point of using that to apply to the situation today, none of these people are following Torah. They claiming to, but they not. So Mm -hmm. that's why you will have a situation where it don't matter who without seeing casting stones, because we live in a Sodom and Gomorrah Babylonian world where survival of the fittest, whoever cast the stone and win, it's okay. We'll rewrite the history. And so to apply it to what's going on with these nations today, they don't live by that principle, so they don't care nothing about that. Right. And, you know, and what did, what did Yahushua say? He came to set the captive free. That woman was captive in her own city by being in you know, salacious type relationships. Mm-hmm. Right? So she didn't even see that she could repent. See, she was in whoredom just as Hagar was, but the father sent Jose to marry her. Right? And to make uh, 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 to give her his name. And that's what Yahushua said. I'm going to give you my name. You're going to be married to me now. Because she didn't have no hope with the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Herodians, and the priests. They didn't give her no hope. Mm-hmm. Them people was like, you ain't nothing but a hoe. Every time they saw it, even if she dressed up, they were still telling her, you, no, you ain't nothing but a hoe. Mm-hmm. You know, after a while, you start to believe that nonsense. You can, re- you can repent. You can be cleaned up. That's what Isaiah's telling us in the beginning. If though your sins are scarlet as red, a red as scarlet, you know, come let me reason with you. I can get you straight. That's all he's telling you. He's giving you hope and faith. But they didn't give her no hope and faith because they were like, she ain't no no good, no way. As long as we got our relationship with these Romans, we don't care nothing about these people. Keep on paying their taxes to the Romans and keep us at the top where we ain't got to work no real job. Basically. That's all what people was talking about. Basically. Hallelujah. Let me continue with this. We got some reading to get through. We still got a hundred verses. <laughs> Hallelujah. This is a good conversation, though. And, and you know, I didn't even think about it, but a lot of this do apply to what we see in today. Um, it's just y'all doing it his way. Chapter 89 of Jasher. Then spoke Yahushua this song on the day that Yahuwah had given the Amorites into the hand of Yahushua and the children of Yasharal. And he said in the sight of all Israel, thou hast done mighty things, O Yah. Thou hast performed great deeds. Who is like unto thee? My lips shall sing to thy name. 
my goodness, and my fortress, my high tower. I will sing a new song unto thee. With thanksgiving will I sing to thee. Thou art the strength of my salvation, which he is. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee. The princes of the world shall sing to thee. The children of Yasharal shall rejoice in thy salvation. They shall sing and praise thy power. That sound like the last days. To thee, to thee, O Yah, did we confide. We said thou art our Elohim, for thou was our shelter and strong tower against our enemies. To thee we cried and, we, and were not ashamed. In thee we trusted and were delivered. When we cried unto thee, thou did hear our voice. Thou did deliver our souls from the sword. Thou did show unto us thy grace. Thou did give unto us thy salvation. Thou did rejoice our hearts with thy strength. And he ought to point at something else I'd noticed while all this has been going on. As we go through everything we go through, as I said earlier, no man shall save us. We know that. So now we are relearning and crying out to Yah, trusting in Yah, trusting in Tor, doing right by him, leaning to the word for prosperity, peace, um, and all things that entail. What was going on today, I have yet to hear a Muslim say, we trusting in Allah. We fasting and praying and Allah going to come defend us. We trusting in the reason why I say that is that also shows the difference in what's going on. These people on both sides of that think by the, well, the might of their hands and governments and Joe Biden and the Western media need to get involved in everything. I ain't heard none of them take the TV and say it. We going to trust in Allah. Now look at the other side of the truth. What are we in here saying? We in here saying we going to trust y'all to the end. <laughs> We know he coming for us and we gonna trust him to the end. That's another difference in what you see going on today that I've noticed. Like Joshua just said here, we know you We know you delivered our souls from the sword. You show unto us thy grace. You did give us thy salvation. You did rejoice our hearts with thy strength. Verse seven, you did go forth for our salvation with your arm. Thou did redeem thy people because no man was going to redeem. You did answer us from the heavens of the holiness. You did save us from 10,000s of people. See, and that's why us now, all of our people don't view it like that. But we look at it like if 10,000 surround us, y'all willing, we putting them to flight 20 deep. <laughs> people in this world don't look at it like that. Even, and it does not matter, and that's why we don't necessarily just judge a religion. Christianity, Islam, it don't matter. None of them religions look at they gonna have that type of faith in the end. That's something that Yah is instilling in us because that's the way it's gonna happen. The sun and moon stood still in the Shemaim, and thou did stand in thy wrath against our oppressors and did command thy judgments over them. This is what the Palestinians are supposed to be over there saying, if what they say is true, but I've come to notice they don't even believe that. That's just talk until it get real. Because now it's real. And I ain't heard none of them take the TV and say that that's what they leaning on. None of them. None of the Muslims I know personally is talking like that. They saying uh, the Western media need to tell the truth and Joe Biden and the UN need to step in. No. No, Joe Biden and the UN ain't going to step in for Israel. We praying that y'all step in. That's what we pray every time we gather. Right now, we praying that Yah step in. All the princes of the earth stood up. The kings of the nations had gathered themselves together. They were not moved at thy presence. They desired thy battle. Same today. These people try, these people try all types of stunts with Yah's people all around the world because they ain't moved by his presence and they desire the battle. We just know the battle is going to be futile <laughs> and men are going to lose. Thou did rise against them in thine anger and did bring down thy wrath upon them. Thou did destroy them in thine anger and cut them off in thine heart. Nations have been consumed with the fury. Kingdoms have declined because of thy wrath. Thou did wound kings in the day of thine anger. So we ain't, 
once again, these people supposed to be fasting and praying that if the if the Quran is true and the covenant been taken from Israel and gave to Ishmael, then that should be what they leaning on. And the irony about the reason why I say all this that I say about the Muslim is because he the one who swear he know the most. Oh, the, the, the Bible and all that Hebrew stuff been translated all these times. It's wrong. The Quran, which is seven, eight hundred years later, is more accurate. And they swear they got it all figured out. Yet we see now, and I, you know, I just you just made me think. I see y'all making a point with that right now. The the Muslims swear he got it more figured out than the Christian. He do. He have but keep some of the the uh, they got their own feasts, but he keeps some of the laws. You know, his dietary laws and his bad. And uh, he do certain little things. They swear they closer related to the Bible. Yet in this time, it's easy to say that from a time of privilege. In this time of need. They not leaning to the Quran. You ain't hearing that. No, you ain't hearing that. You hearing where these nations at, where these cameras at, where these reporters at, where's Joe Biden at. Yet if you talk to a Muslim, even these black Muslims here, the nation of Islam will fair kind them. They got the same mentality. But especially when you talk to these Arabs, oh no, they got it more figured out than you. You don't know nothing. You just a descendant of a slave when you talk to them. Or you a Christian, you really don't know, right? And now we see it in this time of need. No, they ain't got to figure it out either because they not leaning on the truth as they say they have it. And we see here as as uh, Yahushua, Joshua saying, no, Yah's going to wound kings in, they, in the day of thine anger. Thou did pour out thy fury upon them. Thy wrathful anger took hold of them. Thou did turn their iniquity upon them. And did cut them off in their wickedness. You know, the interesting point of that is when we talk about the gospel, you know, some people call it the good news, but Hebraically, the gospel does not mean good news. It just means news. And the way an Israelite would look at it is if he fell on the right side of the news, it was good news. If he fell on the wrong side of the news, it was bad news. And just by reading this, we already see it's people falling on the wrong side of the news. Because like I said, all of this has already been told how this is going to go down. And it's people falling on the wrong side of the news. And to your point, Antioch, maybe not everybody, but I could see this moment making some people saying, you know what, we might have done inherited lies. They did spread a trap. They fell therein in the net. They hid their foot, was caught. Thine hand was ready for all thine enemies who said, through their sword, they possessed the land. Ain't that what's going on? Everybody fight. Hamas, the Ashkenazi, Nations is backing whoever through their sword. They saying they gonna possess this land. Through their arm, they dwelt in the city. Thou did fill their faces with shame. We see it. We see it on both sides. Thou did bring their horns down to the ground. Thou did terrify them in thy wrath and did destroy them in thine anger. The earth trembled and shook at the sound of the storm over them. It ain't trembled and shook yet. And it's a, when you think about it, it's a lot of turmoil right now. You got multiple African nations trying to run the French out of Africa. You got Ukraine and Russia supposedly still going on, which is ironically, as all is going on with these Ashkenazis, you don't even hear about Ukraine no more. I couldn't even tell you if they were still warring over there or not. It might be, <laughs> it might be cool by yai Ukraine for all I know. You ain't heard nothing about Ukraine since this kicked off, and now you got this going on with Israel. It's already turmoil. It's a lot of turmoil. And the earth still ain't shook yet. The sound of the storm ain't over as yet. Just wait till it hit even closer to home. How we gonna look at some of this wrath when this when this when this judgment is coming swiftly upon some family members who don't want to hear no good, don't want to know no good. This just beginning. I ain't gonna say it's just beginning, but this just heating up. Thou did not withhold their souls from death and, and did bring down their lives to the grave. Thou did pursue them in thy storm. Thou did consume them in thy whirlwind. Thou did turn their rain into hell. They fell in deep pits so that they could not rise. The same pit they didn't dug. Them people will tell you that these Ashkenazis is Europeans. They colonizers. They occupiers. It's apartheid. They want to play it like it's, like it's Mandela and them down in South Africa. 
They still in our land. They doing this. They ain't the people of the Bible. They tell you all that. They ain't not once said it's really them niggas though. You know why? I've said this to some of these Muslims too because they know it's true. You know why they do that? Because they rather deal with them Europeans than they have to say it's really them black folks. Know that. Know that. No matter how hard it get, they rather deal with Netanyahu than they have to deal with it. You came, y'all talking about some we really them people and y'all done sent us over here. You better know that. Hey, they much rather have to do that. Their carcass were like rubbish cast into the middle of the streets. We see that, which is the same way it was with us when we fell. They were consumed and destroyed in thine anger. Thou did save thy people with thy might. Therefore, our hearts rejoice in thee. Our souls exalt in thy salvation. Most devils, our tongue shall relate thy might. We will sing and praise thy wondrous works. That's what we doing. That's what we just did in Sukkot. A lot of these Sukkots was a bunch of testimonies about how Yah that brought us to this point. For thou did save us from our enemies. Thou did deliver us from those who rose up against us. Thou did destroy them from before us and depress them beneath our feet. See what I'm saying? That ain't what they saying. I ain't hearing them nothing. On the other side, I ain't hearing none of them Jews say that. Yahweh gonna come do this and that and you know, I ain't heard no Jew do that. You know what they saying? America, we need you to support us. You know why they saying that though? Because after World War II, they wasn't saying Yahweh and God and we the people and these prophets. You know what they were saying after World War II? America, England, France, Russia, Spain. We need all y'all to come support us. No, ain't nobody, ain't nobody on this planet saying that our Elohim is going to destroy our enemies except for us. That's it. You don't hear nobody else say that. Everybody else saying, man, with these nukes and military might and ain't nobody saying that. Ain't nobody saying that. We definitely see a difference. Thus shall all thine enemies perish, O Yah, and the wicked shall be like chaff driven by the wind. And they and thy beloved shall be like trees planted by the waters. Hallelujah. <laughs> so Yahushua and all Yasharal with him returned to the camp in Gilgal after having smitten all the kings so that not a remnant was left of them while Yah left the sun in the sky for 24 hours. And it said it ain't never been a day like it before or after. And the five kings fled alone on foot from battle, which makes me wonder, what if Yahushua, he never asked that, like, because it is y'all did it because he asked it, see it. So what if he never asked? Would y'all had done it anyway? That's something to ponder. The five kings fled alone on foot from the battle and hid themselves in a the cave. And Yahushua sought for them in the field of battle and did not find them. And it was afterward told to Yahushua, said, The kings are found, and behold, they are hidden in the cave. The kings of this world right now is building cities underground, like when they get hectic, they're gonna go hide in caves. It ain't nothing new under the sun. And Yahushua said, appoint men to be at the mouth of the cave to guard them, lest they take themselves away. And the children of Yasharal did so. And Yahushua called to all Yasharal and said to the officers of battle, place your feet up on the necks of these kings. And Yahushua said, so shall Yahuwah do to all your enemies. That's what we are. That's what we are. And sadly, our people ain't always been that. How many of our people, when they was bombing Tulsa, Oklahoma, for Black Wall Street was saying that? So, like, it's a lot go into that. How many of our people are saying that now when Negroes is killing Negroes in these hoods every day? This ain't even just a, a, a this about the remnant, to be honest. This is a remnant thing. This remnant talk. And Yahushua commanded afterward that they should slay the kings and cast them into the cave and to put great stones at the mouth of the cave. And Yahushua went afterward with all the people that were with him on that day to Makeda. And he smote it with the edge of the sword. And he utterly destroyed the souls and all belonging to the city. And he did to the king and people thereof as he had done to Jericho. And he passed from there to Limnah and he fought against it. And, Yah and Yahuwah delivered it into his hand. And Yahushua smote it with the edge of the sword and all the souls thereof. And he did to it and to the king thereof as he had done to Jericho. And from there, he passed on to Lachish to fight against it. And Haram, king of Gaza, ain't that some, went up to assist the men of Lachish. See? 
these Palestinians, a.k.a. these Philistines, possible they've been fighting against Israel. They squatters. No, they got to go. Not only that, when the Arab wars and all of that broke out with the Arabic slave trade and all of that, they was right there helping run Israel up out that land. See, we just in our mind think about the transatlantic slavery, but there was an Arabic slave trade where the Muslims was doing that to our people. Not only did they do it there, they ran off into the north part, north, northwest Africa, and that's why all that's Muslim. Morocco, Mali, Egypt, all that's Muslim. All that's Islam. All of that mess. I've heard some Africans tell me all of that's really Muslim till you get to South Africa. Like, they really conquered it. And in the conquering of it, they was looking for you. They was looking for us. And this is why the cup done run up over. <laughs> and Yahushua smote him and his people until there was none left to them. And Yahushua took Lachish and all the people thereof, and he did to it as he had done to Libna. And Yahushua passed from there to Iglon, and he took that also, and he smote it and all the people thereof with the edge of the sword. And from there, he passed to Hebron and fought against it and took it and utterly destroyed it. And he returned from there with all Yasharal to Debir and fought against it and smote it with the edge of the sword. And he destroyed every soul in it. He left none remaining, and he did to it and the king thereof as he had done to Jericho. And Yahushua smote all the kings of the Amorites from Kadesh Barnea to Azah, and he took their country at once, for Yahuwah had fought for Yasharal. See, that's what we, that's remnant talk. That ain't how people, that ain't how black folks in this world talk. Black folks in this world can't wait till Jesus Christ gets back. <laughs> War don't even make sense to the Christian. He don't think of no judgment. No, that's remnant talk. Y'all gonna fight for me. He gonna fight for Yasharal. And Yahushua with all Yasharal came to the camp in Gilgal. When at that time, Yaman, king of Chazor, heard all that Yahushua had done to the kings of the Amorites, Yabin sent to Yabat, king of Midian, and to Laban, king of Shimron, to Yephal, king of Akshaf, and to all the kings of the Amorites, saying, these Midianites filed too. Y'all, the descendants of Abraham, what are you doing lining with them? You out of order. You out of order. <laughs> come quickly to us and help us that we may smite the children of Yasharal before they come up upon us and do unto us as they have done to the other kings of the Amorites. And all these kings hearken to the words of Yaban, king of Kazur. And they went forth with all their camps, 17 kings, and their people were as numerous as the sand of the sea. We just heard that. Together with horses and char chariots innumerable, and they came and pitched together at the waters of Baram, and they were met together to fight against Yasharal. And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, fear them not, for tomorrow, about this time, I will deliver them up all slain before you. Thou shalt, thou shalt hold thy, their horses and burn their chariots with fire. And Yahushua, with all the men of war, came suddenly upon them and smote them, and they fell into their hands. For Yahuwah had delivered them into the hands of the children of Yasharal. So the children of Yasharal pursued all these kings with their camps and smote them until there was none left of them. And Yahushua did to them as Yahuwah had spoken to him. And Yahushua returned at that time to Chazor and smote it with the sword and destroyed every soul in it and burned it with fire. And from Chazor, Yahushua passed to Shemram and smote it and utterly destroyed it. From there he passed to Aksaf, and he did to it as he had done to Sharon. From there he passed to Ad Adulam, and he smote all the people in it. And he did to Adulam as he had done to Aksaf and to Shemron. And he passed from them to all the cities of the kings which he had smitten. And he smote all the people that were left of them, and he utterly destroyed them. Only their booty and cattle. The Israelites took to themselves as prey, but every human being they smote. They suffered not a soul to live. So we see Israel was obedient in some of this, but we know in some of these places, ironically, amongst these Philistines, where he was like, kill them all, and we did. Remember, Goliath is a Philistine. So like, this is an ancient thing, man. This is, it, 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 it's crazy to see. But we know what time it is. 
And that's remnant talk. As Yahuwah had commanded Moshe, so did Yahushua and all Yasharal. They failed not in anything. So Yahushua and all the children of Yasharal smote the whole land of Canaan, as Yahuwah had commanded them, and smote all their kings, being 31 kings. And the children of Yasharal took their whole country. Hallelujah. Judgment ain't always pretty, but they had to go. Hey, think about it. When Moses told them to go spy it out, we finna take it. They balked and ended up in the wilderness for 40 years. Judgment ain't always pretty. It's got to be. When y'all say it's time, it's time. Besides the kingdom of Sihon and Og, which are on the other side of Jordan, of which Moshe had smitten many cities. And Moshe gave them to the Reubenites and the Gadites and to the half tribe of Manasseh. Okay. And Yahushua smote all the kings that were on this side of Jordan to the west and gave them for an inheritance to the nine tribes and the half tribe of Yasharal. For five years did Yahushua carry on the war with these kings and he gave their cities to the Israelites and the land became tranquil from battle throughout the cities of the Amorites and the Canaanites. Five years he, it took him to fight and run all these people off. And they still wasn't done. He still ain't got Jerusalem. They ain't even get the Jebusites out. It was still war. But it said Yahushua was 82 when it started. This is a, what we would consider an elder. I seen your hand, Eddie. You got anything you want to add to this before we move on? I told y'all, we got to finish this. We got 50 verses. Um, When you had read that uh verse... And, and when we're talking about the judgment of the most high and how, um, you know, and how he's wiping out these towns and these cities, I just felt like, you know, the Holy Spirit eased my spirit. And he was saying, like, uh, because the fallen angels have taught men the art of war. Remember, I don't think it's ever supposed to be like this. Y'all didn't want to have to show these nations the war side. You know what I'm saying? I think I'll be in no lam. But because the fallen angels have taught men the art of war, now because of the jealousy and the anger in their hearts and the conspire against his people, they all come together with one purse to conspire against his people. And he has to be like this. He has to be the type of Elohim that says, look, I'm going to stand up for my people. Why do you guys keep coming and trying to eradicate my people? And I, I just felt like that you know that that's what he was showing me personally and telling me that's why i put my hand down i'm like this might just be for me hallelujah but you know what um that's correct the fallen angels did teach this world to war so um and then when we come off from the flood ham and yafeb had to pass that down to their children same with shem i would say right so to your point we know that he do it for his glory sake too. This is what this world understands. So I'm going to show y'all. And at the end of this, we ain't quite there yet. Some may be seeing it and converting over to it, the thought process of it though, but we ain't all the way there yet. But at the end of this, this world going to say, no, nah, that was y'all. <laughs> no, nah, the way all this stuff spilled out was y'all. And we see it formulate. And I told somebody recently, man, and I don't know what type of timetable we on. I have an idea, but I ain't standing on nothing because I know no man is just going to know today. But we are in a time now where I would not be surprised on any morning we wake up and this world may be at the completely change. I feel like we're watching it change slowly now. But we are at a time to where nothing will surprise me in the morning when it comes to the news and the current affairs of the world. Because we in that time. Joshua chapter 9. Coming to the end. Hallelujah. We got to get this done. Anybody got to go? It's getting late. I get it. I'll do it by myself if I got it. But I'm finishing this tonight. I'm not going back to Joshua no more. We got 67 verses. Hallelujah to whoever got to go. It is getting late. I feel you. But we coming to the end of this tonight one way or the other. <laughs> Jasher chapter 9. At that time in the 50th year after the children of Yasharal had passed over Jordan, 
after the children of Yasharal had rested from their war with the Canaanites. At that time, great and severe battles arose between Edom and the children of Chittim, which we know to be the Europeans today, the Greeks, the Romans, which today could be, you know, because Europe doesn't claim the tribalness of its deal, but we know it exists. That could be, Edom could have been war with Ukraine for a lot. Don't let me say that. But Edom got to fight with the, with the Greeks, the Europeans, Chittim. And the children of Chittim fought against Edom. And we know from this, Zepho was up there and Chittim, these Greeks and these Edomites have a connection. They have an ancient ancestor that connects them, at least a tribe of them that would be in Greece, not all of them, because we know that they are Euphetic. But it's interesting that they would right here at the end say that they would start to go at each other for whatever reason. And Ebonius, king of Chittim, went forth in that year. That is the 31st year of his reign, and a great force was with him, with him of the mighty men of the children of Chittim. And he went to Seir to fight against the children of Esau. So he went a long way. I can't say that because I don't know exactly where they coming from. But yeah, what we would call a European today. And Hadad. And I must say this, I really I feel like I don't have to say this, but because the way this world is constructed and the way these Israelites be acting, I have to say this. These children of e these Edomites, these children of Esau would have bunch of, been a bunch of black people. They was going to fight. I feel a need to say that. And I don't even know if these children of Cheetah might not have just been white. They might have just been super light-skinned. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But I feel the need to have to say that for somebody who might hear this. Verse 3. And Hadad, the king of Edom, heard of his report. He went forth to meet him with a heavy people and a strong force and engaged in battle with him in the field of Edom. And the hand of Chittim prevailed over the children of Esau. Esau lost to these Europeans and the children of Chittim slew of the children of Esau 22,000 men and all the children of Esau fled from before them. And the children of Chittim pursued them and they reached Hadad, king of Edom, who was running before them and they caught him alive and brought him to Abanias, king of Chittim. And Abanias ordered him to be slain and Hadad, king of Edom, died in the 48th year of his reign. Chittim smote them heavy. And the children of Chittim continued their pursuit of Edom, and they smote them with a great slaughter, and Edom became subject to the children of Chittim. That's interesting, because that ain't how these Israelites say today. That these Israelites say today, everybody in Europe is Esau. <laughs> Let me stop. I to get out of this. And the children of Chittim ruled over Edom. Really? Uh, okay. And Edom became under the hand of the children of Chittim and became one kingdom from that day. That's interesting. Really? Now that's interesting. That will speak to the how these lineages have gotten mixed up, which I do believe there has been a mixture of the lineage, but I don't believe that everybody white is Edom, is Esau. That I definitely do not believe. That's just a little too far-fetched for me. But we do see a mix in here. Hallelujah. And from that time, they could no more lift up their heads. Really? And from that time, they could no more lift up their heads. And their kingdom became one with the children of Chittim. Really? Okay, now that speaks to why the Herodians, who would, was considered Esau, had such a close uh, connection with the Romans. That kind of speaks to that. But we ain't going to dive into that. We as we is, is, is greater things to be disgust and the body is placed officers in Edom and all the children of Edom became subject and tributary to a body and the body is turned back to his own land of Chittim. I must say something else too and this is my opinion but when it comes to that Esau is the white man and all white people is Esau I don't subscribe to that but something and I can't prove this but something that has always spoke to me in a way and this is my opinion though I have always felt like them Ashkenazis could possibly be Esau. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's just 
it fits scripture that they would be there claiming to be us in this land because we see that Edom from the time of Esau and Jacob and that fall apart, Edom in Torah has always fought to be in this land claiming this covenant, which is why I think that about them. So I ain't necessarily standing on that, but that's always been a thought to me that these Khazarians really could possibly be Esau. I feel the need to say that right now. And when he returned, he renewed his government and built for himself a spacious and fortified palace for a royal residence and reigned securely over the children of Chittim and over Edom. It's a European here. A, a seed of Yafet, as we know Chittim are, uh, to be more specific, they threw Yafet, through Yafet's son, Javin, I believe. In those days, after the children of Yasharal had driven away all the Canaanites and the Amorites, Yahushua was old and advanced in years. And Yahuwah said to Yahushua, thou art old, advanced in life, and a great part of the land remains to be possessed. And just think, he fought all them years, he old, and it's still a lot of land that still what grabbed it. This, that speaks to this conversation about where is ancient Israel today. It was still a lot of land to be grabbed, which... If we place it where it's, where it's said, where common thought is today, we're talking about all of this land where these nations is at today is Israel, Jordan, Iran, Turkey, Saudi Arabia, a big part of where Egypt is today, if not all of it. Uh, I'm missing somebody. Syria, Lebanon, uh, all of that. A part of Iraq. All of that is Israel. Now, therefore, divide this land for an inheritance to the nine tribes and to the half tribe of Manasseh. And Yahushua rose up and did as Yahuwah had spoken to him. And he divided the whole land to the tribes of Yasharal as an inheritance according to their divisions. That's Revelation. When they talk about the 12 gates and all the names on these gates and who you think going to be standing there making sure everybody going through the right gate? Yahushua. But to the tribe at, at Levi, he gave no inheritance. The offerings of Yahuwah are their inheritance, as Yah had spoken of them by the hand of Moshe. And Yahushua gave Mount Hebron to Caleb, the son of Yefuni, one portion above his brethren, as Yahuwah had spoken to Moshe. Therefore, Hebron became an inheritance to Caleb and his children until this day. And Yahushua divided the whole land by lots to all Yasharal for an inheritance as Yahuwah had commanded him. And just think, if I'm not mistaken, it's probably about 300 years between Yahushua, Joshua, and King David. And I want to say it's King David who come through and take everything that's left that wasn't taken. So it was a period. And the children of Yasharal gave cities to the Levites from their own inheritance and suburbs for their cattle and property in. As Yahuwah had commanded Moshe, so did the children of Yasharal, and they divided the land by lot, whether great or small. And they went to inherit the land according to their boundaries. And the children of Yasharal gave to Yahushua, the son of Nun, an inheritance amongst them. By the word of Yah did they give to him the city which he required. Timnah, Sirach, and Mount Ephraim. And he built the city and dwelt therein. These are the inheritance which Eliezer the priest and Yahushua the son of Nun and the heads of the fathers of the tribe portioned out to the children of Yasharal by Lot and Shiloh before Yahuwah at the door of the tabernacle. And they left off dividing the land. So it wasn't even just Yahushua by himself. The elders, which were the heads of the tribes at the time, whoever they were, Eliezer, who I'm believing is the high priest at the time, son of Aharon. Yah had a council of Israelites divided up. And Yahuwah gave the land to the Israelites, and they possessed it as Yahuwah had spoken to them, and as Yahuwah had sworn to their ancestors. And Yah gave to the Israelites rest from all their enemies around them, and no man stood up against them. Revelation. When I retrieve my people and move them back, it's going to be peace. Ain't going to be no war. Ain't nobody going to run up on them. That ain't what we see with these folks over here claiming to be that. 
That's because these folks might possibly be Esau, but I ain't going. <laughs> and Yah delivered all their enemies into their hands, and not one thing failed of all the good which Yah had spoken to the children of Yasharal. Not one thing failed. Yeah, the Most High Yah performed everything. And Yahushua called to all the children of Yasharal, and he blessed them, and he commanded them to serve Yah. And he afterwards sent them away, and they went each man to his city, and each man to his inheritance. And the children of Yasharal served Yahuwah all the days of Yahushua, and Yahuwah gave them rest from all around them, and they and they dwelt securely in their city. See, it was all about the obedience, and Yah gonna do the rest. That's remnant talk now. Our people now like, no, nah, we gotta get this money and buy this land and do this and do that. No, it ain't nothing wrong with that. Well, all we got to do is be obedient. We ain't got to have a dollar and y'all going to make it. Well, we going to dwell securely in cities. I believe that. And it came to pass in those days that Abanius, king of Chittim, died. And in the 38th year of his reign, that is the seventh year of his reign over Edom. And they buried him in his place, which he had built for himself. And Latanius reigned in his stead 50 years. Now, we looking at around somewhere between, I'm going to say about in the range of about 1300 BC. I always thought this Latanius was an interesting name because we know that the that the language that I believe was first attributed to like the Greeks and the Romans was Latin. I find him interesting to be a king who have reigned in the time of when all of that would have been really taking place or taking hold, I should say. Be that as it may. And during his reign, he brought forth an army and he went and fought against the inhabitants of Britannia. So we know that it was people in Britain because Britannia, we talk of Britain, Ireland. As we look it up, the Britannification of Britain, usually depicted as the helmeted woman with a shield and a trident. And it's talking about a person, but they called it that. Once again, the Latin name for Britain, Britain under Latanius. And we know the Roman slash Greek spoke Latin. The Septuagint was first translated, which I will believe a thousand years after this story in Latin. Carnania. Let's see if it tells us something that they say this may be. No, it don't. I don't know what it is. It's just saying something about French there. Maybe this was French. But it's, what it's showing us here is that it was people in these spots, though. The French is just saying it could be possibly an origin of a French word, maybe. But it says the children of Elisha, son of Javan, because Chittim and all that is sons of Javan. I knew that, sons of Yaphel. And he prevailed over them and made them tributary. So now we see that Chittim not only is dominating down back towards us, but even going deeper into what we call Europe. They were dominating at this time. And this is before Caesar and the Roman Empire and all of that. Okay. He then heard that Edom had revolted from under the hand of Chittim. And Latanius went to them and smote them and subdued them and placed them under the hand of the children of Chittim. And Edom became one kingdom with the children of Chittim all the days. Okay. Yah ain't let them up. And for many years, there was no king in Edom and their government was with the children of Chittim and their king. Really? And it was in the 26th year after the children of Yasharal had passed the Jordan. That is the 66th year after the children of Yasharal had departed from Egypt. 66 years. That Yahushua was old, advancing years, being 108 years old in those days. 66 years since leaving Egypt. I think that's an interesting number. 40 of which we know were in the will. And Yahushua called to all Yasharal. Oh, I find that interesting too that they said that Hamashiach was 33. That's interesting. And Yahushua called to all Yasharal, to their elders, their judges and officers, after Yahuwah had given to all the Israelites rest from all their enemies round about. And Yahushua said to the elders of Yasharal and to their judges, behold, I am old, advanced in years, and you have seen what Yahuwah has done to all the nations whom he has driven away from before you. For it is Yahuwah who has fought for you. Not America, not NATO, not the UN, not China, not Nigeria, no, y'all. 
Now, therefore, strengthen yourselves to keep and to do all the words of the law of Moshe, not to deviate from it to the right or the left, and not to come against those nations who are left in the land. Neither shall you make mention of the name of their gods. Don't even mention them. But you shall cleave to the Most High Yah, as you have done to this day. And Yahushua greatly exhorted the children of Yasharal to serve Yah all their days. And all the Israelites said, we will serve Yahuwah our Elohim all our days, we and our children and our children's children and our seed forever. And they did. And Yahushua made a covenant with the people on that day. And he sent away the children of Yasharal and they went each man to his inheritance, to his city. And it was in those days when the children of Yasharal would dwell securely. It was in those days when the children of Yasharal were dwelling securely in their cities that they buried the coffins of the tribes of their ancestors. Remember, they brought uh, Yosef and um, the patriarchs. And it makes me wonder how many ancestors they brought out. We might have brought them all out, which makes me wonder about the wilderness. Where was we storing all of these dead bodies? Makes me wonder. Which they had brought up from Mitzrayim, each man in the inheritance of his children. The 12 sons of Jacob did the children of Yasharal bury, each man in the possession of his children. I show you real respect after all them years to bring them bones up out of there and bury them in the plot of land that Yah gave them. And these are the names of the cities wherein they buried the 12 sons of Jacob, whom the children of Yasharal had brought up from Mitzrayim. They buried Reuben and Gad on this side of Jordan and Romeo which Moshe had given to their children. So we're talking about, I'm going to say, in the range of where Saudi Arabia slash that nation of Jordan slash, I don't even know what other little nation might be right there, but somewhere in that range. And Simeon and Levi, they buried in the city Mauda, which he had given to the children of Simeon. And the suburb of the city was for the children of Levi. And Yehuda, they buried in the city of Benjamin, opposite Bethlehem. And the bones of Ishakar and Zebulon, they buried in Zidon, in a portion which fell to their children. And Dan was buried in the city of his children in Eshtiel, Eshtal. And Naphtali and Asher, they buried in Kadesh, Naphtali, each man in his place, which he had given to his children. And the bones of Yosef, they buried in Shechem. And the part of the field which Jacob had purchased from Hammer, and which became the Yosef for an inheritance. And they buried Benjamin in Jerusalem, opposite the Jebusite, which was given to the children of Benjamin. The children of Yasharal buried their fathers, each man in the city of his children. I wonder if Benjamin's bones are still in Jerusalem or did they dig them up somewhere? And at the end of two years, Yahushua, the son of Nun, died, 110 years old. And the time which Yahushua judged Yasharal was 28 years. And Yasharal served Yahuwah all the days of his life. I remember when we started judges on Shabbat, I said that Joshua, maybe even Moshe, could probably be considered the first judges. Um, I think that's very true. But knowing that Moshe didn't claim a king, but he really kind of was like the king of Israel. So I guess that's debatable if you want to play into the semantics of the word. And the other affairs of Yahushua and his battles and his reproofs with which he reproved Yasharal and all which he had commanded them in the names of the cities which the children of Yasharal possessed in his days. Behold, excuse me, they are written in the book of the words of, Yahush of Yahushua to the children of Yasharal. And in the book of the wars of Yahuwah, which Moshe and Yahushua and the children of Yasharal have written, and the children of Yasharal bury Yahushua in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Sarat, which was given to him in Mount Ephraim. And Eliezer, the son of Aharon, died in those days, and they buried him in a hill belonging to Phinehas, his son, which was given to him in Mount Ephraim. 17 more verses. I'm going to finish these. 
At that time, after the death of Yahushua, the children of the Canaanites were still in the land and the Israelites resolved to drive them out. And the children of Yahshua asked of Yahuwah, saying, Who shall first go up for us to the Canaanites to fight against them? And Yahuwah said, Yehuda shall go. Of course he did. He is why King David, the one who's going to do it. And the children of Yehuda said to Simeon, Go up with us into our lot, and we will fight against the Canaanites, and we likewise will go up with you and your lot. So the children of Simeon went with the children of Yehuda. And the children of Yehuda went up and fought against the Canaanites. So, the, so Yahuwah delivered the Canaanites into the hands of the children of Yehuda. And they smote them in Bezek, 10,000 men. And they fought with Adon Bezek in Bezek. And he fled from before them. And they pursued him and caught him. And they took hold of him and cut off his thumbs and great toes. <laughs> that was funny. And Adon, Adonai Bezek said, Three score and ten kings having their thumbs and great toes cut off, gathered their meat under my table, as I have done. So Elohim has requited me. And they brought him to Jerusalem and he died there. He was cutting off tongue, thumbs and toes of kings up under him, 70 of them. And Yah made it be done to him. And the children of Simeon went with, went with the children of Yehuda and they smote the Canaanites with the edge of the sword. And Yahuwah was with the children of Yehuda, and they possessed the mountain. And the children of Yosef went up to Bethel, the same as Luz, and Yahuwah was with them. And the children of Yosef spied out Bethel, and the watchmen saw a man going forth from the city, and they caught him and said unto him, Show us now the entrance of the city, and we will show kindness to thee. And the man showed them the entrance of the city, and the children of Yosef came and smote the city with the edge of the sword. And the man with his family, they sent away. And he went to the Hittites and he built the city and he called the name thereof Luz. So all the Israelites dwelt in their cities and the children of Yasharal dwelt in their cities. And the children of Yasharal served Yah all the days of Yahushua and all the days of the elders who had lent in their days after Yahushua and saw the great work of Yah, which he had performed for Yasharal. And the elders judged Yasharal after the death of Yahushua for 17 years. So Israel is still following Yah for at least 17 years after the death of Yahushua. But we know going into judges, all that fell apart. Our people backslid. And the elders have also fought the battles of Yasharal against the Canaanites. And Yahuwah drove the Canaanites from before the children of Yasharal in order to place the Israelites in their land. And he accompanied all the words which he had spoken to Ibrahim, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, and the oath which he had sworn to give them and to their children the land of the Canaanites. And that oath still stands today. That's why we in this time that we in. It's because of those words spoken to Ibrahim, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. And, the, and Yahuwah gave to the children of Yasharal the whole land of Canaan, as he had sworn to their ancestors. And Yahuwah gave them rest from those around them. And the children of Yasharal dwelt securely in their cities. And that's the day we live in for. Blessed be the Most High Yah forever. Amen and amen. Strengthen yourselves and let the hearts of all of you And trust in Yah be of good courage. That's an interesting way they ended that. Let the hearts of all you that trust in Yah be of good courage. You're going to need it in these times we see. In these times that we see going forward. Hallelujah. Any questions or comments? Anything anybody got for this before we go? We made it to the end of the book of Jasher. It was a long journey. This was a long journey. 91 chapters. Hallelujah. That's an accomplishment. We made it. Hallelujah. Anything anybody got before we pray out? <clears throat> now let's get to it. As we pray out, hallelujah, we focus our minds on the kingdom of heaven. And we just thank Yahuwah for allowing us this journey for us. Uh, for edifying us and and, and 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 building us up in this word 
helping us to better understand certain stories, certain events in Torah, helping us to better understand the history. Um, we know that your Ruach HaKodesh was over us, Abiyah, because as we went through this, you'd have brought out a lot of principles and, and different things that I'm speaking for myself that I never thought about. Um, um, even like tonight, helping us to be able to frame and see what's going on um, and what we believe to be our land, Abiyah, as 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 Torah. And, and um, although it seems lawless and out of control, we know that you are in control, Abiyah. Um, and just the way you made it make sense through what we were reading tonight speaks to the inspiration of you. Uh, we thank you for giving us clarity as we read through this too. Um, and, and hallelujah, as we read through most of this, because uh, we know that some people will try to tell us this ain't canon, Abiyah, but you led us to see that most of this, if not all of this, really matched up with Torah. There was not really even anything that did. There were some ideas that we know that they took out of this or took out of what we call canon. And we thank you, Abiyah, for helping us to understand they took out everything that spoke too much about the oppressor. And you helped us to see and to be able to uh, recognize him when he's trying to move. They took out everything. They spoke to the lion of uh, 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 the lions and the warrior tribes of Jacob, his sons. And you showed us that would we come from. But you also helped us to see um, a whole other side to the humility of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the meekness and and just the way they carried themselves, which is also inspiration and encouraging that we can do this. We thank you, Abiyah, for everybody who's been a part of this. Most of these people have been here the whole time. There's been other people come and go, but we thank you for everybody who's been able to glean anything from this, whether they listen to it later or not. We pray, Abiyah, as you are moving in this world, that you continue to speak to us and reveal to us and help us to see and frame the events of today, that you put the words in our mouths as we move forward and people ask us anything about this in Torah, that you speak through us to make sure that we represent you the right way, Abiyah. And I just pray that everybody's family is blessed. Everybody is uh, um, everybody is experiencing shalom. Everybody is experiencing the prosperity that you have laid before us. Everybody is secure. And in these little plots of Goshen around this world where we are, Abiyah, understanding that from Torah that you have our, always protect our people in the midst of the calamity. We just humbly ask Abiyah that you do it again. I ask that you forgive us all of our sins, Abiyah, that you teach us where we err knowingly and unknowingly, and that you put it on our heart to acknowledge it, to do our best to correct it, um, and to give more of ourselves, to sacrifice more of our flesh to you every day. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach, we pray all things. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Well said, Abiyah. Awesome study. Thank you, Robert. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shalom, everyone. Shalom, shalom. We'll be picking up something new next week. I'm gonna keep y'all on the edge till I see y'all next week, but I'm I'm pretty sure. <laughs> hallelujah. I'm pretty All sure. Right. But hallelujah. It was, it was good talking to y'all. I gotta go get some dinner now. It got late out here. <laughs> hallelujah. Shalom. Shalom. Always a pleasure. Y'all have a good night. You too.